Space panties for you. <laughs> Alright. Shall we like stop talking Tesla about Joker? Shall we talk Welcome about Welcome to episode three of of the Dead Kids Club. We're back. We're back. This is the this is the podcast a... that talks about everything and nothing. Just and today question. today we are talking about period panties. We talked about it already. <laughs> well we actually talking about Lisa. The styles of the Rich and famous. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> We're just three Robin leeches sitting in a room after a couple of beers. Oh, yeah, it's going to be... I, I apologize, because if I'm loud normally... Don't apologize to these slobs that listen should to we the should program. We don't even have you. <laughs> Do you think we should shut the window? Yes, we should. I already feel like I can't breathe with the window closed. It's fine. God, it's... Yeah, it's like a meow. It's getting so hot. In well, opening when it gets disgusting. Anyways, yeah, we're talking about death styles of the rich and famous. I found an archaeological example of this. Okay. So if we want to go chronologically. Yeah, let's, let's right. start at the beginning. I couldn't keep it to myself, so I already sent you the picture. But I have to share it with the world. Okay. I think I actually put into Google, like, burials of the rich and famous or something like okay. that. Not, not, nothing very specific. And this thing came up. And, yeah, I recommend everyone... Who has internet to Google with me? <laughs> because I just love it so much. W W. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's on it's on Google Images. I feel like you don't need to have them anymore. Well, you don't have to, to put the W W W thing. You just search things. Yeah, it because, knows what because you're, Alexa so, knows what I'm gonna say. It's so likely you don't have Alexa. I don't. Siri. <laughs> I wish I had Alexa. I no, like... it laughs creepily. You don't want it. You have you seen that video? I know. I it's, just. It's, it's I wish I had Alexa. Alexa, also, I am. Sometimes I just shout out to it. Just, just don't to nobody. To you, just shout Alexa <laughs> yeah. in your empty and house tell her by to do yourself. Things, yeah. Alexa, turn the lights on. And then you have to walk and turn. And then I just, I'm, I'm Alexa. <laughs> do you thank Alexa? Mm-hmm. Do you thank yourself? This is a Thanks. really just a very bleak kind of existence. Very dystopian. But if I just it? had an Alexa, everything would be fine. You know, imagine if you had an Alexa <laughs> and then it broke down, and every time you'd be like Alexa, and then nothing would happen, and you just realize how sad your life is. Do you think the Alexas here are English? They probably default to an English accent, I've like it's a regional a... thing. Oh, I would um, want mine to be American. Like I think me. I think they like my Siri is American, right? Like no, Siri's got kind of that mine? like mid Atlantic accent. Yeah, like Fraser. Like, yeah, where it's like, it's, not British, it's from nowhere. But it's not British. It's not a British and, accent. And, and uh, there is a video American. on YouTube where they tested Siri, Alexa, and whatever there is um, for accents. Hey, go- okay, yeah, Google. okay, Google. Okay, Google. Okay, yeah. Google, I guess, yeah. For accents, and yeah, obviously it did very well with American and everything else. It kind of struggled. Scottish, Irish. Absolutely couldn't not. and then for an accent like italian well like, there's a really funny video of like the old italian grandma who gets like, a, she's like, like google home google okay, okay. google <laughs> google play me italian song oh i love and they're her. like you need to say hey google first and she's like hey google hello <laughs> google <laughs> so nice and then like she's so surprised when it starts playing something and she's like Oh my God, Jesus Christ! And she like crosses herself, and she's like a spirit, a spirit. <laughs> it plays like Bolero. Yeah, or something. yeah. It's like uh, when the moon hits your eye, like a big pizza pie. <laughs> and like the family's all the clapping. A Google like, is a, this is the demon. It's you very, discovered what it is. Very funny to me as somebody who worked with several old Italians. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna be when I get Alexa. Your ankles You're gonna just be collapse old Italian. into your oh. calves. You're like three feet tall, and you're like, okay, Google. <laughs> Alexa, you my only friend. Alexa, my dog. All right, well, you know, <clears> I <throat> imagine that <throat> rich people don't have any of these problems. What their real problems are is what to do with their bodies after they die. Mm-hmm. So continue telling yeah, us about so this. Anyway. Did you, wait, this were you ancient... gonna say the real problem they have is their ego when they die? Because they still no, whatever. Well, I mean, I'm not yeah, gonna. But... So, as uh, I'm gonna start with a 
archaeological example and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this amazing burial that I found on the internet okay. the webs <laughs> and it's uh, it's a <laughs> important man from a Varna culture it's uh, in northeast of Bulgaria uh, around 4,000 before Christ so it's around the same time as like uh, the Mesopotamian cities and it's very old and <laughs> another shock that I had it's very it's it's similar time I looked at it it's like obviously there's some older ones but the main ones are around like this sort of time old. period anyways are you trying to explain my Wikipedia uh, no Google? I'm just looking for, <laughs> I'm just looking for my own Alexa benefit. when Sumerians <laughs> and Akkadians yeah 3100 BC but there are a few that predate the, that, yes right? she said that I just said it we asked Alexa. She confirmed. Continue your story. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I kind of thought it was. So <laughs> the first point of surprise. <laughs> don't look at my. You're sitting. <laughs> you're like <laughs> spreading I'm, your legs. Your man's I'm spreading. spreading. <laughs> I'm spreading. I'm comfortable. <laughs> I'm letting you breathe. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> my first point of surprise after discovering it was that there was at some point in Europe in this time period a very advanced civilization I thought that our first advanced civilization started at about later than 8th century after Christ because, uh, not including Romans obviously just you know I mean that this part of non non-southern part of Europe, <laughs> where I, I thought at this at this time we would we were still like living in caves kind of thing because that's <laughs> we were doing that for a while, you know. So that was the first point of uh, surprise that there was a very rich, mm-hmm. very uh, very well developed uh, culture, with a lot of you know burial uh, ceremonies and rituals, and loads of gold. Shit mm-hmm. ton of gold. Apparently Well like the Scythians had tons and tons well, of gold. Well this stuff. this did you go to that exhibit? Yeah, hell yeah. It was I so didn't... cool. I missed it. Yeah, the Pazaric tombs and stuff. Was it awesome? What yeah, time period awesome. is it? I can't remember the time period, but it's like Scythian uh Do quick like quick step search. people. Okay, yeah, okay can... Google. Okay, Google <laughs> uh, Pazaric tombs. But I'm gonna talk about grave forty three. <laughs> From the Varna Necropolis, and this grave had the most gold that has been recovered from this time period, from this epoch, in all of the world. Like, it was just, if you Google it, it's filled with gold. Mm -hmm. And then, so I really recommend Googling Varna Burial, it will come up, um, first thing on Grave 43, Varna Varna Necropolis, and I, if anyone is Googling this, I recommend looking at the crotch area. As usual, just in any Google search, always inspect the crotch. Straight to straight the crotch. Straight to the crotch area, especially now, but always. Um, because this, I presume, was a man, had a penis cap, had a real gold penis cap, and I think that's the most incredible just example of is that what it's called I, that's how i call it no it's called the penis sheath the sheath yeah in in literature it's reusable condom. <laughs> in, so i was thinking about it i don't think yeah. it is uh in in literature <laughs> it's penis sheath i i think it's a penis cap. i just call it a penis was cap. It worn in life in I, which case it would have had some sort of like like a leather strap it didn't oh. well that would disintegrate to be yeah. honest it's yeah, a very it old thing it. but course, i don't yeah. think it did oh. i think if you look at the picture it just looks like like a bottle <laughs> like something that you put on a bottle or something like that you know? <laughs> like a bottle cap or something it's like a little dome yeah a like little, a little a dome little cuppy. yeah a little cuppy yeah <laughs> um but um like half a hot dog <laughs> <laughs> like a third of a hot dog it's very tiny actually <laughs> but, there's no scale in this picture. yeah but, but like, we also we also is... don't know how much of yeah the... but maybe it's just covering part of his that's dick, what i meant that's We'd... far away from his we don't know. well this is this is maybe he's got a big hammer and that's just covering part of it well 
the sad part about <laughs> it is that apparently they found it not in this place that is on this picture. They just put it in. But Aww. Oh, wait, the archaeologists put it there? Yeah. So they're just interpreting it as a penis sheath. When really when it, it could have just been, been like well, it was a ne- shot glass. Yeah, it like was next to the femur. It was like ne- very close to the femur. The upper leg bone. Yes. But I am going to go with the explanation because in, in 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 literature it does say it's penis sheath but it, it they don't go in detail I they just know more. they genuinely just say grave 43 was penis sheath. very very rich had a lot of burial goods Ooh. and a penis there. sheath and that's it that's, that's what i said i'm I like want to know so the much moment more. you say a penis sheath gold penis sheath you need to elaborate like yeah i feel like they could have really had like a lot more on that. It's 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 such a great example of like you know this idea of masculinity and apparently it's at a time when um there was like a shift from matriarchy to patriarchy, so obviously the sort of idea of masculinity was you know it just ah, you can just go on and on with this. I feel like it had to have been worn in life. Well, they right? they do say it's some sort of but like it's a, just like whipping out this golden penis. You wouldn't you though <laughs> if you I had mean, that i mean i wouldn't <laughs> but it was like part of some sort like, of like just exposed well, my accessory? golden penis well when when i showed it to my boyfriend he was like well i know what i want for my birthday just a golden he wants that so do you think it's like a um like <laughs> you know those things that you can wear that'll like you like lock them like a chastity belt do you think it's like part of that no mechanism no i don't think so because okay. this grave was really <laughs> rich and they yeah, kind looking of suggest at these pictures there's all sorts of like bronze objects they like they suggest it was some sort of like a and... shamanic figure like somebody who is you know very 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 important in the society uh-huh. and i presume that people like that do not wear chastity belts. Yeah, but it could be like a uh, maybe you wanted to wear. Yeah, it was by choice. Yeah. Oh, you need to get to me. You know, it's like a kinky thing. <laughs> you have to to get to me. You have to get through my golden penis. Yeah, sheet. it's not a thing. No. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, it must be. I'm not gonna Google it on our school internet. <laughs> Archaic chastity <laughs> foreplay penis sheath. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to Also, look that there up. was the only grave with a penis sheath. So, like, okay, it's the only grave with a penis sheath. What if it was like the guy who just had a prosthetic penis? Like, what if it wasn't a covering? It's just. They were like, this is a, a social Vicky. pariah. It was either. Uh, is it a penis book cut or something? Yeah, maybe. Uh, but if it was a social pariah, you wouldn't get a gold thing. I mean, maybe he's wealthy. Maybe they didn't. A wealthy the social pariah? <laughs> yeah. Donald, Donald Trump? Trump? He is the president. <laughs> he is yeah, not a social of... pariah. Uh, he's <laughs> people don't like him. A lot of people. He would all, like also get. Yeah, but not. A, a he's not a pariah. Staff, oh, he I was. I guarantee he would. Oh, if he, he would, lost his if, penis, it, he'd be like, cast it in gold. Yeah, it he probably be, already has it ready to go. Yeah, just in yeah, case. Yeah, <laughs> because he's impotent. That is the only one he can use. Ah, yes, he uses his golden penis. <laughs> would on, you want to wear that? Like, over my own penis? Yeah. Or just, like, if I was hypothetically missing? No, over no, your, not a like top, a cap. A top. Like a sheet. No, probably not. It just, like, reduce any feeling. Not during sex. Just oh. hanging out. Just hanging just out. Be- just before, just like before a form, like like, like show your masculinity. My, let me remove my golden penis sheath. She she can do it. Like a section. <laughs> she can do it. Like a it, that kind of sound. I, I feel like you have to get it. You know, it's it's a different size, at, at different times. So you would probably yeah, have to you, remove which, it. I presume they got the penis sheath cast when they're erect. But then it will fall off. That's why you have like pres- like a little leather strap, strap. to hold it on. It's a strap on. What if it's just it's like a jewelry that you on. wear on the normal day and then you know, take it off? But then it just it kind of like sits, rests in the cuppy. Yeah. Until maybe you're so ready the to end go. probably has to cinch a little bit more to hold it onto the base. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then I, I mean, it, ma- it matters still, but gold's pretty malleable. Maybe it expands a bit. <laughs> this is a wealthy individual in society. They're probably can wouldn't that be the like artisanal a- dick casting? <laughs> Some poor blacksmith has to make this oh, definitely. dick sheath out of metal, <laughs> finest wrought gold. Well, what were they wearing back then? What kind of outfit did he have on where he could just have it just like out a little bit? Maybe? I have no idea what just the wearing, like, culture wore. Wearing one of those old-timey wore. strappy skirts. Yeah, like, with the just like coming hat. through oh, like you, a curtain. You know that meme, classic, um, what is it, classic art memes yeah. that is... Um, it's this medieval painting, or just like just this uh, person with this sort of like a coat that is up op- that ends just above the crotch, and it has like these huge balls in the middle, and it's just like that's so it's like this coat is just displaying sh- the balls, just displaying the balls. So no, it's but, something like that. Um, I have a related story to that. I was I used to play in pipe band, and <laughs> oh, many many years ago, I was at a Highland Games in California, and there was this man whose name I won't mention, but. Uh, <laughs> He was like just drunk off his ass, and we we're outside the hotel where like the the games was, and he's in a kilt, and he's like leaning back full spread, and you just see his balls, and they're like I shit you not, the size of like two grapefruits, like they're Why were they so colossal. Big I have no idea, colossal, and he sticks a pint glass up his kilt and just pisses into the glass. And he's like laughing and conversing with people. And he just puts the glass. How full was it? Like full. (laughs) He puts it in a flower pot behind him and just leaves it there. And I'm talking to another guy, Ken. And I'm like, hey, Ken, what's the deal with this guy? And he's like, oh, that's so-and-so. He's like a raging alcoholic. But we put up with him because he's filthy fucking rich. He came to my wedding and he... He just pissed all over the dance floor, but I let it slide because he gave me 10 grand in cash as a gift. What? I was like, all right, I guess if yep. you're fantastically rich, you just get away with shit like this. So, yeah, that was this guy with colossal balls that I saw at the Highland Games. You think they were actually grapefruit size? I mean, time probably has obscured my memory of it, but they were they were massive. Like, just I've never seen anything like unhealthy like looking. So. Well, have you? No, I just genuinely think balls are not very aesthetically pleasing, so I wouldn't want to see them grapefruit sized. No, they were just huge. Ugh. Not, 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 not a fan of the way balls look. Not gonna lie, I just, just not, <laughs> not really doing it for me that much. So what if they were covered in like a golden? Oh no, yeah. Like, Oh yes. Yeah, what if this, oh, so this yes. uh, penis sheath of this Varna Grave, Varna Grave forty three for those of you who want to look at it online. <laughs> uh, what if they also had like a ball cover? Yeah. I think that would be better. I don't have that much of an issue with the way penis looks. It's more the ball. So if if you if you just had accessorize balls. the balls, I think that's really like, the way to go for me personally. <laughs> All right, well. If uh, anyone is interested. <laughs> now everyone knows. If you want to woo Marie, you just That's need typical. to cover your balls in gold. Yep. And, and speak like Dracula. Be charismatic like Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> no, just come at me with like a Hungarian axe. <laughs> just have one of those those caves. With oh, them. yeah. And nothing else. Just the Well, cap. the golden just, yeah, ball golden, cap. Golden ball and penis cover and a vampire dracula cape yep all right yep that's it does he have to be fit to be physically fit i mean because <laughs> again the, to get back to what we talked about last episode what if it was danny devito <laughs> <laughs> with just his balls and penis covered with gold and his big belly <laughs> <laughs> You can't even see the gold balls with the belly. So you'd prefer that? No. <laughs> I want to see the gold. I like sparkly. I'm like magpie. I like, <laughs> just like sparkly things. I love it. Fair enough. Uh, Let's go back to the rich and famous. Yeah, I guess we could probably talk about something other than gold penis covers for a little bit. Cool. We'll okay. come back. To well, that, uh, yeah. that was my it was my input. I have another one, but I can have it later. Um. So I had briefly mentioned the Pazarek tombs 
at some point, and there was mm-hmm. a really fantastic exhibit at the British Museum that was on a couple of months ago, and it was like the furnishings of a lot of these different step tombs uh, that were uh, the Scythian people who lived there. So they're all like nomadic hunters and herders and stuff like this. But just the the preservation of these tombs because it's all like permafrost. There's fantastic preservation of all the the textiles and like wooden objects that don't normally preserve and tissue as well. So a few of these graves have like natural ice mummies with like full tattoos and stuff Whoa. of like all the the animals that live on the steps and they're kind of interpreted as these like spiritual tattoos and whatnot as, as far as I recall. But these the tombs are really well furnished and a lot of them haven't been looted so there's like chariots and whatnot. Uh, it was kind of just in connection to what Maria was talking about earlier with all the, the gold. There was just so many different gold like belt buckles and like uh, furniture for chariots and like um just all these different jewelry. It was, I was not going to it's, it's amazing. Some of I'm not stuff. going to the British Museum because it's also a lot of like, it, it's kind of coming back into fashion, things like that. Like, you know, it's just like if you go to like the Raymond and the Sierra, like they're really old ones and it's just so beautiful. And I'm just looking at them like, I want to wear this. Yeah, it's, it's a so fun game to go to the museum and just like look at a particular cabinet and be like, which one of these would I want? Like this, hmm. What jewelry in here would I want? I always want the Liberace style, just have all of them. Huh? Yeah. Oh, the Sumerian. So gorgeous. It's this um, incredible flowery, like, head pieces. They go, like, all over the hair. And there's, like, these, like flower crowns. And just, you know, the jewelry. There's that one the that's there that's, like, a big, like, huge necklace. Like, hinges open and would have just, like, clasped onto basically your whole shoulders and it's pretty incredible. impressive That's incredible. but yeah you're right that i i thought that sort of scythian stuff was a little bit older but it's like third fourth century bc not quite as old as your golden penis man what can i say <laughs> well speaking of being buried with gold have you seen michael jackson's coffin i mean i have oh, i have not, not in person. okay i'll pull it up for I, you i wasn't invited to the funeral I only sort of knew him. I'd only been to Neverland once. <laughs> didn't sleep over. I didn't make the call. Oh, then it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like, from what I remember, it's like a gold plated castle. Yes. Um, it's the Promethean. That's the model. Promethean. That's a sick name. I want to be buried just, in the castle. It cost $30,000. Bronze, polished gold, finish exterior uh, with blue velvet interior, 14 karat gold plated hardware. And who did he copy for this casket? It was... It was James Brown. The James Brown. They said that he... MJ went went to his... Prince. Prince of Pop. Yeah, I think so. And he... He went to his funeral and was like, I want that one. I want that one. Got the same casket. You know, I always think about what happens to that velvet as the body decomposes. Oh, it probably gets horrific. It's disgusting. But... It's a little flashy. It's just, isn't it a waste of gold? Yeah, but I mean, that's just like this sort of extravaganza. Yeah, extravaganza. Look how shiny it is. Well. It's polished to a Damn. mirror finish. Yeah, it's great. Is that Usher? Hell yeah. Did he sing? Usher for him? is literally an usher at like, <laughs> seating people. I can't remember when that was on TV. Like, we I were didn't... all alive when this happened. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. I wasn't that interested. I don't remember watching it either. I was also... But still, it's like a very extravagant display. Yeah, right? it's incredible. That's the kind of... Yeah, I mean, even his... Well, his... Almost like a mausoleum, isn't it? His, his grave. Yeah, and you need... It's like close to the public a lot of the time. Like, oh. I think you need to book. So mm. There's guards out in front of it, too. Oh, my God. He has his own bodyguards <clears throat> even after death. Well, it's also fantastic. after death, he's the highest earning celebrity, making seventy five million dollars. Two thousand seven. Seventeen. Two thousand seventeen. As a dead person, still seventy five million dollars. Oh, he's yeah. the he's the highest it's earning like, dead person in two thousand seventeen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, get it, get it, get it. Yeah, and in twenty seventeen, seventy five million. Palmer. Yeah, because he has all this like merchandise, all this golf Yeah, Arnold Palmer shirts. And the Zona iced tea. Yeah, they're great, like old man kind of shirts. <laughs> Tony Soprano, like. Yeah, they're just really polo. baggy polo yeah, shirts. Yeah, my dad. Oh my god. Like that. 
<laughs> Betty <laughs> Betty Page is on that list. How? Oh, she's yeah. There's all these people because they they so images licensed for things yep. and like loads of creepy rockabillies like Elon Musk buy shit. That's and like their Betty name Page's is licensed yeah. and they turn them into holograms and do weird like computer stuff and put them in ads and they have perfumes in their name and all this stuff. And so there's also so like much the, money. like calendars or something with Betty Page or oh, like yes, true. Elvis or mm-hmm. I mean I don't understand Elvis just Betty Page that her only product was the photographs I'd say is the, and that's why I'm surprised. I'm surprised David Bowie is all the way down there. It's like 11th. Did you think he'd be more? Yeah. He is a legend. An actual one. Yeah, but I mean, beyond like that pretty famous picture of him with like the star man makeup on. Are they like, music that, though? Yeah, the music obviously, but like his image doesn't get licensed out a ton. Like, I assume that Albert Einstein's way up there because like his image ap- appears on like t shirts all over the fucking place yeah. or like mugs and dumb shit you see in like the dollar store that hmm. says like when did he die? 1955. Well, we've only talked about my thing. Let's go with somebody else before I go, before I talk about my mafia stuff. Oh, I looked at some mafia stuff too. So we can all oh, you did that. too? Just a little bit. What'd you look at? Just showing pictures of the mafia tombs. <laughs> and, I mean, some of the, like, Italian mob tombs are, they're ostentatious, but they're not, like, just hugely elaborate, I don't know, kind of standard family tombs. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are like hidden away too now, and you need to really search through the the cemeteries to find them, like because they're kind of these weird like pilgrimage sites for people who are really super stoked on the mafia. So, are there like, people who are stoked on the mafia? Yeah, people love the mafia. Why? Because it's this like interesting cultural thing about like Italian Americans, and people love the Sopranos, and so they want to go visit like John Gotti's grave and like. Lucky Luciano and stuff like that. So there, there are these sites, and like I think there are guards and stuff in the cemeteries who kind of keep people from going to these sites. And then I'm sure there's the enemies of these guys who are still alive probably like to go to those graves and like desecrate them and stuff like that. So there's probably things put in place to prevent that. But I assume you looked at sort of the same article, and it was like. The, all the Russian mob graves. So, it's yeah, the like, Russian mob graves, it's it's a thing that I've known about for a while, and yeah. it's one of my favorite things that's literally there. It is kind of, in this podcast, I, I go back a lot to my Slavic heritage, but, again, this is just a incredible <laughs> example of the lack of taste yeah, they're Eastern pretty, Europeans like, have. Ridiculous it's the, I, I like them. It's the <laughs> ugliest, kitschiest, but most incredible thing that I think, yeah, I, I just love it. So it's, uh, I will not be able to pronounce it well, but it's Shiro, Shiro Korechenskoye Cemetery in uh, Yekaterinburg in Russia. And it's, it's a... Um, a mob cemetery not the whole thing is not a mob cemetery but there's a lot of mob there's in lot it of and they just have like pictures of cars and it's it's a laser like it's it's laser larger edge. than life laser engraved pictures of like themselves it's it's from like 90s gang war so either in 90s suits which are fucking colossal or like, just- look at this guy's suit it's double breasted and he is, he's like four <laughs> feet wide yeah <laughs> Or, it's or track suits. Yeah, there are a few track suits. Or track suits. Okay, and there was a and there was a couple of ladies that I saw and I think those are my favourite because he looks like Tony Soprano. <laughs> Just like... The, the ladies are like if it's a young woman, she has these like a very t- a very short uh denim jacket, uh with like a tight shirt and like uh heel boots. But if it's like an older lady, like a fifty plus, she's pictured like basically a duchess with like this, you know, a robe and big hair, and it's incredible. They're drinking. They have these these all nineties Mercedes cars engraved with them. They yeah. are holding like car keys. Cool. I love these. It's incredible. No, it's I mean, incredible. You see, I mean, that's just like a Toyota. That one. Yeah, just like <laughs> just a front end of a car. Like an old boxy. It's, it's and, great. And sometimes, like, what I was reading an article that they have, like, um, 
their uh, nicknames aside of the names they have the nicknames and it's it's like and then things like a puncher or a you know like it's just just the most ridiculous nickname the puncher and uh, it's <laughs> just uh it's absolutely fantastic and sometimes like whole families yeah, yeah the one when they're sitting family. at the table He's sitting yeah. with like his sisters and they have like their girlfriends and or wives engraved with them and they might not be even buried there like they might be alive but they'll still have them yeah this is like well i mean a lot of people have their plots arranged before they die and laser etching is something that like not just mobsters do but these are pretty over the top like he's got his mansion in the background it's larger than life it's, yeah. oh, these are fantastic. We highly, some of them are highly recommend. Looking yeah, just up Google Russian mob tombstones. Like yeah, or something like that, or like I the Yekaterinburg yeah, like yeah, yeah, mob cemetery. Just it's is <laughs> just like sitting with his shirt so unbuttoned fantastic. to his belly button. He's got like, like an ashtray, an yeah. old cell phone, and a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was like a DQ Dilly bar, like a Dairy Queen <laughs> ice cream cone, <laughs> oh, <it looks laughs> just like melting on the table with <laughs> this heavy it's set symbolic. lobster. It's great. Um, yeah, so this is cool. You don't, from what I remember, like a lot of the Italian mob tombs don't have stuff like that. They just have your classic sort of Catholic hmm. angels and stuff like that. I mean, they're pretty grandiose, but oh, I just grew up Italian <laughs> tombstones. <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> Alexa, Google Italian mobster tombstones. Uh, these are, I guess, okay. I think I still think the Russian. That's one of the, the Russian ones, ones again. We, most of these are just the Russian guys. Because it's so fantastic. It's a tour. Oh, there's a tour of crime boss grave sites. The mob is in Queens is the title of this this super <laughs> reputable <laughs> internet source. St. John's Cemetery in Middle Village, Queens, is the final resting place of some of the most notorious organized crime bosses in history. So these guys were like kind of rich and famous. Yeah. Luciano though, everyone knows. Got a nice little mausoleum there. Yeah, nice little mausoleum. A little cross, very understated. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's fancy. I bet he spent a lot of money building that, mm -hmm. but it's not like John Gotti and Frank Gotti. Yeah, this one's pretty fancy. It's in like Ooh, a... Look at all the inlaid oh, wood. Is that yeah. a high rise? Yeah, it's in like a high rise in the cemetery and there's guards <laughs> there and you can't go in. Yeah, Gotti's vault entombment is in an exclusive marble high rise building in the center of the cemetery. Um, if you do make the trek to visit the advised, the cemetery office doesn't take too kindly to like people coming on mob tours and won't give you a map either. Oh. Uh, and yeah, it's rumored as, that as late as the 1980s, groundskeepers monitored certain graves and didn't allow casual visitors to photograph them. Why? Yeah. Again, just to kind of deter that like cemetery tourism, mob tourism stuff, I think. Because it probably damages the cemetery or people are like taking souvenirs or something. Mm. But I mean, at the end of the day, these guys did a lot of shitty things, but they're still people. So like their families probably come to grieve and stuff. So. If, like, the mother comes and there's, like, chips out of the tombstone because, like, weirdo tourists have come to, oh, I stole, like, a piece of Lucky Luciano's tomb because I'm a weirdo mob enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> Shit like that probably gets mm. to the family. Another crazy tomb I read about was uh, Nick Cage's tomb in, uh, in New Orleans. Have you not heard of this? I don't know. He's got, mm -hmm. and so it's in like the old cemetery, which is, uh, he bought a plot. It's St. Louis number one cemetery, which I think is the oldest one in New Orleans. Um, so he's built this giant pyramid. It's like 10 feet tall or something like this. It's, it's already there. Yeah. He's got it there. It hasn't got his name on it yet, but everyone knows it's his tomb. And like, there was a huge uproar about it because it kind of like, it doesn't really fit with the aesthetic of the rest of all the, like, the old sort of mausoleums and stuff. And I think he converted to, like, Catholicism to be buried there, or to, like, buy the plot. He built this giant pyramid, and people will, like, make pilgrimages to it, because he's a celebrity and all this shit. <laughs> Apparently, people will leave kisses on the tombstone, like, the people who are obsessed with Nicolas Cage will come and leave like bright red lipstick kisses well, on his <laughs> marble 
pyramid tombstone. Even though he's alive. Even though he's still alive. <laughs> well, yes. um, when I was in Paris a couple of years back, uh, we went to the... Oh my god, what's the name? The the Chesse The Pierre. Pere Lachaise. The Pere Lachaise. Like the big one. Yeah. The, the big old cemetery. Couple oh. of, like a year before that they opened the Oscar Wilde. Yeah, that was another one I read about. And like Too so. people and the moment so when I was there it was gar like there was a, there was a, a huge there was a huge glass what a, there was like? a glass protection over it, I'll tell you. And then there was a fence, like a you know, the sort of like festival. Yeah. Fe- yeah. The the metal sort of festival fans that he had that was all over all around it as well um and it was because people were coming in and kissing the tombstone yeah. uh and it was all covered it was all covered with like bright red uh, lipstick marks they had to and then the glass cover was as well and then so they had to put this fence around in it so people were putting like notes on the fence it was crazy it was yeah. like this entire cemetery was like it was some really old so they're quite famous people but it was all fine but yeah. this well, in particular that particular grave was incredible. Yeah, and Oscar Wilde's got like a pretty fancy one. Where it's like a big Sphinx kind yeah. of tomb. Yeah, so it's, it's very new. It's a it's it's a very new new uh, grave because. Oh, it's been like redone. Uh, well, he was back when he died. He was um, social pariah. He was not mm-hmm. uh, well received, and he was he was you know kind of in exile and you know just out of jail. So he wasn't he wasn't buried in any ceremonious way, and they uh, reburied him. With this, with this new tombstone, yeah. So that's in that's a whole new act, 2014 or something. I don't know. Like it's a, it's a fairly. Oh, I th- the way I read it, I thought it was like an older tombstone, and then they they just put in like the glass barriers and stuff because so many people were coming to it. No, it I think I think it was it. very very early after they put the put up the grave. But that is something you happening. see with a lot of these kind of like celebrity. I think it's incredible like that it's with like Oscar like Wilde because it's. Pilgrimages to them. I mean, an incredible author and you know, an important literary figure, but it's not like a celebrity of our times. Mm-hmm. It's not, you know, I do understand why people, you know, get this obsessed and do these pilgrimages and kiss the graves of like people who, you know, kind of live in their times and they, you know, but Oscar Wilde lived 100 years ago and it's incredible that his reach is so wide that people even now have this, you know, yeah, this much this, love for yeah. him that they that they do that. It's that's quite that's quite spectacular. But it's kind of cool to see these like not like cults that grow up around these mm. in the traditional sense of cult word, but like followings, I guess, who will come and make those treks to see the grave of like their heroes of like like Elvis or whatever, like going to Graceland and mm-hmm. seeing Elvis's tomb and like Johnny Cash or whoever, stuff like that. These celebrities like carry this sort of cultural cachet that people would make that that track. And I suppose you could probably draw a similar comparison to like Martyrs. martyrs in the past of yeah, like absolutely. people going to see the bones of like a holy saint just because they think it will get them. Oh, to a church like, that was built on a place where somebody died. Yeah. Yeah. Because it kind of connects them to that individual mm. and they think that that will give them some sort of boon in life. It's it's pretty interesting to see some of these. But also, the, the counterpoint to that is, like, you have some of these modern celebrities who live these incredibly lavish lives and then have, like, pretty normal graves. Mm-hmm. Like, the one that sticks out most to me is, like, Liberace. Like, I remember when we were kind of talking about doing this episode, we said, like, we are both, like, looking at pictures of Luch- or, uh, Pover- not Pavarotti, uh, Liberace, and is, like, gold everything house. Yeah. And, just so so fancy and he's buried in like a pretty normal tomb with like his brother and mom i think and it's got like a little angel on it and that's it so sometimes these graves aren't such an ostentatious display compared to how the individual live. maybe his mom was just like i uh, i want a normal grave and you're gonna be here with it with me so uh deal with it <laughs> so mom stepped in <laughs> Have you guys ever gone to visit a famous person's grave? Yeah. Who did you go to see? I don't know. Um, Like, I don't think I ever went, like, purposefully that would be like, I need to visit this one person's mm-hmm. grave. But I do like, I love going to cemeteries. Yeah. Um, I yeah. I, you know, um, almost, we went to, when we went to Austin this couple, last month to the, to the conference, 
the first day we we didn't really have anything to do because the conference had started and the first thing we did was when that we went to a cemetery mm-hmm. so um i do that quite often um <laughs> my boyfriend and i we are we have this thing where we uh, go to the cemeteries and we look at the names and we choose the, the names of our future children there <laughs> like the most ridiculous names <laughs> my cemetery game is to look for people who died on your birthday it's a good one as well yeah do that sometimes um so i haven't like went to see mm-hmm. specific graves but i've uh seen you know I've, I've walked in cemeteries and you know so, so i haven't I, made that same track like People no, I didn't didn't go there as a, as a sort of yeah a whole. Like, or you didn't mission. go to like Père Lachaise to see Jim Morrison's grave or whatever. No, 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 no. I went. No, I didn't go there for specific purpose. But when I was there, I was like, oh, this person is there. So, mm-hmm. so I went to see them. I went to see the okay. graves, <laughs> but um, I wasn't kind of planning on it before I. You know, yeah, yeah. Like my main point was to go <laughs> to the cemetery, and then I decided to see. A few of the fancy ones. Yeah, like Highgate Cemetery here. I don't think I've ever made the trek up there specifically to see Karl Marx's colossal head grave. I haven't seen it. Is it a bust? It's just his gigantic head, and it's like seven feet tall. Whoa. It's huge. And also, I feel like he would probably hate that grave because it's so opulent. And I think his original tombstone is in the cemetery there, uh, and it's just like a normal two foot tall yeah. tombstone and then they were like no he needs this big oh, elaborate grave and it's just yeah his face it's, it's so non marxist is it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh but i think you would love it to be honest just write, writing a manifesto doesn't mean that you live it you know i think i think there was some <laughs> ego over there going on but yeah i think yeah i've seen i've seen a couple so i've seen basically a lot of the czech ones Frank kafka and these people when i was in Paris, Sadi Piaf, Oscar Wilde. There's some good ones, but um, yeah, I don't really remember. Peter Ako, former director of this institute, is buried in Highgate. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I've seen his tomb. It's just a, like a normal little, little grave. It's uh-huh. not anything fancy. That's a lovely cemetery. It is I've a never really been nice there. cemetery. Oh, man, you gotta go. Yeah. But you have to pay for it, though. Yeah, but one side's it's like. Okay to go in? One side's like. Five pounds. The side where you get the, the guided tour is like fifteen. Yeah, the the Karl Marx one. You only have to. You can only go that with. Um, no, no, no. The Karl no, Marx it, one is, is on the, other the, one? the okay. regular side. The big one. Uh, that side is really nice. There's like a cool colonnade of all these uh, columns and like tombs tucked in between them. It's mm-hmm. really really cool. Wow. Highly recommend. It. All right. Have you? No, I don't think I have gone to see any famous persons buried. But I did some research on the cemeteries in Hollywood mm. and what Way they're honest. like. Let me find them. Just rereading some of my notes <laughs> about this Nicolas Cage stuff. It's like there's all these ridiculous theories about um, how it's like connected to the Illuminati. Like most normal <laughs> yeah. people are like, oh, it's because he was in National Treasure, and that's kind of like one of his bigger, more recent yeah. movies, and he gets associated with that a lot. So he built this pyramid. But then people are like, oh, it's totally Illuminati. Nicolas Cage is immortal. Like, look at all those old <laughs> pictures of him on the internet from the 1800s, like the original daguerreotype stuff. What? Have you not seen it? No. Yeah, there's pictures oh, where somebody him, bears Nick, like Nicolas Cage, Keanu Reeves, and I think Daniel Radcliffe are the immortals because yeah. there are so many photographs of people in the past. Oh, just not even photographs, just p- p- uh, paintings. That looked just like them. Yeah. It's brilliant. So there's this weird idea that Nicolas Cage is an immortal. Wow. Then why would he be building his own tomb? Just for show. Hmm. Well, because he has to pretend that he's dying. He has to go into the tomb for a period of years and then emerge a new generation as somebody else. Ah, I see. So that nobody nobody knows he's immortal. That's, I think, the thing with the undead is there's Mm. a period of activity and then recession. So nobody really gets an idea especially that, if you're a high profile immortal yeah you can't just well, move he must to a have different amassed country. like a humongous fortune yeah not just for being a celebrity in ridiculous movies but <laughs> years of on death <laughs> anyways tell us about these hollywood all right hollywood so tombs. yeah so there's a few forest lawn cemeteries um a lot of famous people are buried at um glendale and hollywood hills 
and they have um, one of them. I think it's the Hollywood Hills one. Yeah. Has a, I don't think it's life size, but maybe it is a replica of the old North church, which is a church in Boston, like this historical church in the city of Boston in Massachusetts. And there's a replica. Of the, cow, baby. Yeah. That's a New York. Can accent. you do a, a Boston accent? Oh, Boston? he can't. I can't. No, he can't. No, can't. Park the car and have a yad. <laughs> Marky, Marky, Mark, Marky, Mark, Mark. Marky, Mark. <laughs> we can't do it. Uh, there's a replica of the Liberty Bell, and there's all this like weird Americana themed stuff and like gigantic mosaics. Like I think it said it's like the largest mosaic in the world or something like that, and all these crazy, crazy things. And it's huge and beautiful. Is it beautiful or is it just kind of? It doesn't too much? even look that tacky. Really? Yeah. yeah some of those look pretty nice. They actually, because it's huge, like, there's a lot of space that it's just, like, vast, and... America is the, crazy. Oh, and then there's the, I think it's called... There's so much space in America. I think it's called, like, the Grand Mausoleum or something, which is where a lot of people, including Michael Jackson, are. Yeah. And inside there, it's, there's a 30-foot stained glass um, replica of the Last Supper. Hell yeah. Painting. The but painting. it's a stained glass... And it's 30 feet wide. It's That's gigantic. Um, and they have um, a replica of the Pieta. Oh, the my God. Michelangelo sculpture yeah. and all this stuff. But it, it doesn't look tacky, though. It actually just looks like a really beautiful. Like a, I can't, a nice, peaceful muscle. Yeah. I can't <laughs> it's huge. imagine how it's not looking tacky. I would have to well, see it. Let me show it. you it. Oh. Also, I don't everything. trust American taste. I also don't like not trust British taste, I think. They put... They put carpets everywhere they put carpets British people into bathrooms i know i have no it's taste. filthy here <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible place we're living in oh you want to stay you keep your visa girl <laughs> here's the here's the last supper stained glass everything's marble like all different colors of marble and these statues it, it just looks, looks like, like you're in like italy yeah. yeah like it doesn't look tacky not too bad because it's so big and everything's so spread out. No, I would prefer to use that money in my life than in my death. If I had it, I would use it, you know? Like, but this way people remember you for always as having been a baller. If you splash out that cash on your... But that's the thing. I don't need to be remembered. Yeah, I, don't I have no gain from it. No, but I think that, know. that's a lot of what very often tombs are at least that's yeah no exactly that's that is like, no it's the yeah. it's the i think it's you know it's the human ego and the the idea that you have to be but some yeah. of it like in particularly like some of the archaeological interpretations like sort of what the the people who are living who are maybe like kin of the person who died like them showing their own kind of wealth by yeah giving a lot to this the construction of this grave right like that can be part of it too where People are trying to jockey for position in the society by showing their association with this person and showing how much wealth they have to expend on yeah. something that's not really functional. In um, in ancient Rome, they would do this with the cremations, like imperial cremations of people in the government and stuff like that, really wealthy, important people. Um, their funerary pyres they say would be super super huge and the size of like multi-story buildings Tight. and it wouldn't just be wood it would be like furniture and like a boat and just everything in there and they just set it all on fire their slaves would be in there and animals and like all kinds of shit and they'd set yeah. it all on fire and it would be that moment during the cremation was a spectacle for the people watching yeah. a lot of like right like opulent viking tombs have similar kind of expenditure like well there's a traditional idea of like the boat mound tombs and stuff mm -hmm. or the, the the cremation fires there too but like yeah i've read about them having horses sacrificed in the yeah. tomb and yeah like the, the sort of slaves and like all of their furniture and equipment and stuff it's like all these things that the individual needs for the afterlife kind of mm -hmm. idea it's pretty insane expenditure. Like, can you imagine that today? Like, some wealthy person like having all of their animals slaughtered. Yeah, set like, their house on fire, their cars. Yeah, yeah. 
Just like Jay Leno burning his entire car crashing. <laughs> Jesus. Mm-hmm. I mean, that'd be a pretty sweet thing. Like, yeah, it'd be cool. Was. Oh, God. <laughs> to be buried, like, in it. That would like fit the, right in the Echo Terror book. Like a sneaker <laughs> coffin. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Those are, there's some pretty crazy coffins out there. Cool. That's stupid. They have, like, Nike Air Max <laughs> coffin. <laughs> nice and cushiony. Yeah. I like that. Bouncy bounce. <laughs> It's got her support. It's got arch support. <laughs> um, I also looked up. We talked about this the other day in the office, like that list of most opulent tombs. Oh, I just yeah. googled most opulent tombs. It was like on this horrible website. Yeah, terrible, terrible <laughs> website. So I don't know how accurate these figures are, because the opening line of this article is: "Ever since centuries ago, people have spent a lot of efforts to build a tomb." <laughs> These expensive tombs are the proofs. <laughs> so, but it's not like a joke. No, they, I it's think like it's somebody wrote written. an article. <laughs> and it's uh, Mao Zedong's crystal coffin is the fifteenth most expensive on this list uh, at five hundred thousand uh, dollars. Yeah. Yeah, and it's yeah, just yeah, like course. his corpse, like mummified or filled with preservatives inside. Like a glass case, like I assume similar to a wedding style. Yeah, like a mausoleum sort of thing. Um, yeah. And they scale up immensely. Like the final one on the list is the pyramids, and it was like five point two billion dollars or something was the estimate. They just cost. like make up. A yeah, I don't know how they come to these costs. Estimates, well, because but... I think they um um don't they have like. Um, a lot of sort of receipts and um, yeah, there's pretty good record like, like a transaction records from the from the ancient Egypt. Yeah. Um. So maybe from that, you know, they can they can uh, estimate yeah. it from like the they might have other sort of records on like the, the amount of materials and things. Yeah, like that. definitely. Things that is something that you could probably estimate like fairly easily. But there's some cool stuff on the list of like the Taj Mahal, mm-hmm. where there are all these very famous buildings that you don't think are like actually tombs yeah like, there's a right. there's a tomb component in in there or like and just talking about you know mausoleum the actual first mausoleum the seventh one what was it the seventh wonder of the ancient world uh which now we have in british museum uh, which was like a spectacular thing as well I don't know anything about it, so I don't know what I'm talking. The Greek, the... It's not Greek, no. And there are pieces... Oh! Oh, the Halicarnassus. Halicarnassus. With, the, with the horses. Yes. Right. I like that. Yes. That's mm-hmm. That is a cool room. And it's right before the Parthenon Marbles. Yeah. Which need to be given back. Uh, so does everything in that museum yeah, and the V&A. very true. My friend, our, uh, our Greek friend, her boyfriend went to the British Museum once and he stole something from the gift shop. <laughs> and he was like, well, they stole everything from <laughs> from me, so I can steal from them. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Fair enough. But the oh, Terracotta Army on there is, on this list is pretty cool. Oh, this it's is only 10 crazy. Million, I, don't that, that. I don't believe that either. Because all of these guys were like custom made. Yeah. And like, also, uh, there's like River Ma- of Mercury. River of Mercury. Yeah. So, pardon the horrible pun. It's very metal. <laughs> like, to just be buried. Could you imagine just seeing it? I just want to see it. With a fucking river of mercury. <laughs> That's so cool. It is very cool. Imagine it. Just Do you think it just like moved this. very slowly? Yeah. I bet it looks so cool. How, where do you get this much mercury? Stuff? I know. That's no where idea. it all went. That's why we don't have any yeah, anymore. That's the world's resources. Of <laughs> that was it. 99% of it. That and treating syphilis in the Victorian <laughs> era. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hatters, weren't they inhaling mercury? That's why they got mad. Oh, oh. In the haberdashery. Yeah, I didn't know that. it's the but why you say mad hatter? Mad as a hatter. Yes, they. Uh, I, think I they just assumed it was like lead. Everything, everything. I'm not sure. Mm. I, might be, but it I thought I thought it was mercury. Probably mercury. Might be something else. I thought. I don't know. We don't do any research before this. No. No. <laughs> you can still get mercury poisoning. Like in shit town. Yeah. I love shit town. Uh, shameless. Unshameless black. Shameless. Shameless black. Oh my god, English. 
<laughs> but so um, they will fix it. My parents still have mercury-based thermometers in the house. <laughs> so I grab it wow. like, to measure your temperature. Yeah. Everyone in Germany will have them. <laughs> Do you break them open to see? No, like, no, it's hold it in your hands. Yeah, you can see the mercury. Bit. You can see it. Oh, you should it's, break it open. It's it's glass. It. It's glass. So, so the mercury is the thing yeah. that's showing the sh- showing it, with the temperature. Yeah, but uh, obviously it's like from very early on. Your, your parents are telling you like, don't break this. It's it's dangerous. Squeezing it. So it was always like, oh, watch out. And they oh. break for some reason. I don't. I don't know how it breaks. They're made of glass. No, like. They stop working. <laughs> oh, really? I think so. Okay. Here's a fun little fact about right. Hatter Madness. Abraham Lincoln was shot by John Wilkes Booth, and Booth was shot by Boston Corbett, and Corbett spent his early life as a hat maker. It is believed that this has affected his decision making later in life. So he was considered mad as a hatter. Oh. And that's why he shot this guy? That's why he was going against orders when he had Booth cornered in a barn in Virginia, shooting Booth instead of taking him alive. Wait, he was cornered in a barn? I assume it was some sort of, like, arrest. It doesn't say, but I think Corbett was likely a cop. Oh, okay. And he was later thrown into an insane asylum and then escaped, and he was never seen again. (laughs) It must have been so easy back then. Yeah, back in the day when you could just break out of jail. And also never to be seen again. You literally, you just move to a next door village and nobody knows you yeah, there. Yeah, life was yeah. so easy for the immortals back then. Yeah. And murderers. Mm-hmm. This is back in the day when, like, forging it. Well, they were talking about this on another podcast. So it was like forging a document. It was just like writing your name on a piece of paper. Yeah. And you're like, this is my new passport. Even just like in the 90s, you could just write checks. Hell yeah. You could just write Passion checks. checks. Bouncing checks. Bouncing checks. <laughs> Do we have anything else to say about the death styles of the rich and famous? Or just anything. Did you guys see any dead people this week? Mm-hmm. I saw a guy with an extra finger on the tube today. <gasps> Whoa, shit. Polydactyly? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Oh, I know <laughs> what we need to talk about. The mustache. Oh, God. My oh, mustache. My yeah. It's hardly... It's, well, it's, kind of it's grown, grown yeah. now, but... Last week, it was a fantastic mustache. Yeah, earlier this that. week, I was too lazy to go up the three flights to my room. So when I was shaving, I forgot my beard from my guard. And I was like, well, I guess I have a mustache. So I'm not going back upstairs. So for a few days, I looked just like an old-timey. I think you're the great. Yeah, I, 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 I genuinely think you should try and rock that a bit more. Yeah. I think, I think it suits you. Oh, we can you. all work on our mustaches. Yeah, yeah. I'll stop bleaching mine. Me too. We can all have a mustache. <laughs> Podcast mustaches to match our tracksuits. Yeah. Oh yeah. We'll when we, when we when we have a the lunch. same haircut. <laughs> Aaron and I already have the same. Yeah, haircut. if I didn't have a fringe, we would basically <laughs> have the same haircut. <laughs> I'll just get a little trim. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll We're all good. start wearing a baseball cap. That's probably a good place to end. Should Say we give goodbyes? a little teaser about what our next... Uh, do we know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we do know. We found something in our office. Oh, yeah. Our office is a treasure. Treasure trove of... Bones. Tons of bones. Forgotten things. All PhD students stuffs giant skulls of animals that we don't even know what they are. That's a walrus. That a oh, walrus. it's a walrus? Mm-hmm. Cool. That's great. Yeah. But, aside of that, <laughs> we found a old... Oh, what is this? Oh, it looks DVD. very old to me. What's the DVD? It's not like... It's not ancient. What? It's not like an eight track <laughs> GHS. Uh, <laughs> like real to real? I don't think it has a... Wait, a track was a... Music. S- music. But there was something that came before VHS. Real to real. <laughs> Unauthorized copying, reproducing, hiring, lending, public performance, and broadcasting prohibited. We're not broadcasting it. Oh. Betamax. That's Betamax. what I was thinking. They're like just big fucking Yes. Yeah. But what's real to real? Can you check on real to real? Real to I think real. it has no sound. Well, so we found, these, is, we found these videos. Like DVD. DVD oh. videos of... Gunter von Hagen's autopsies. Autopsies. It's three. It's for beginners, life and death, and Gunter's, Gunter's ER. ER. 
So what I, I was, was gonna say Gunther's heir. Gunther's heir. Heir to the throne of Gunther. Um, um, so I was thinking what we could do, we can go to my house, we can put them on without the sound and record as we watch them. So that's next episode. That's our next episode. We're going to discuss old autopsy videos. Hey, so all you Canadians out there, eh? if you want to give us the old uh, rate review and subscribe uh, while you're watching the NHL playoffs, uh, you know, rate, review, and subscribe, because uh, if you do, then the Las Vegas team will win. Or they won't win, depending on what you like. I don't care. I haven't watched hockey all season, but, you know, it's killing me as a Canadian. Rate, review, and subscribe.